Yahweh and Yeshua speak TV show. We are the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry, and we are broadcasting from Evanston, Illinois. This is Hebrew History Month, and this is sermon number three, entitled, The Dynamics of Dominion, A Queen of Israel Prophesied Over King Lemuel. Let's start out in Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Praise this is what the world calls Black History Month, Hallelujah. but it is Hebrew History Month to yes, it us is. Hebrews. Yes, we are. Isaiah, the 60th chapter. And the title of the lesson, this is sermon number three, The Dynamics of Dominion, a Queen of Israel prophesied over King Lemuel, going to Isaiah or Yeshaya, or Yeshayahu, chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 60. And we're going to read verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 60. Hallelujah. And let's read verses 1 to 3, please. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. Upon thee. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But... Yahweh shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Verse 3, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Bless Yahweh for his word. It says, Arise, shine. Now he's talking to the spiritual royalty, the Shemite spiritual royalty. It says, Arise, shine, for your or or your light is come. And Yahshua is the light of the world we have received, yeah, Yahweh's yeah. son, Yahshua. And it says, Hakabodo, the glory of Yahweh, is risen upon thee. Why? Because we're hearing from him, we're listening to him, we're following him, yeah, yeah. we're obeying his laws, statutes, and commandments. Yeah, yeah. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover her errand. So there is darkness, it's talking about spiritual darkness, ignorance of his word. And matter of fact, some people see his word, but they don't want to believe his word. It says darkness is covering the yeah, earth. Yeah. And then it says, not only is darkness on the earth, but gross darkness yeah. is covering the people. Oh, I am. Because the people are wanting to believe and think whatever they want to believe in. Right, think. right. I like it. It says, but Yahweh shall arise upon thee, and his kabod, his glory, shall be seen upon thee. So we're going up and up. And, and receiving more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Yes. It says, And Hagoi the Gentiles shall come to thy light, which is not our light, it's the light from the scriptures yeah, yeah. that our Father has given us. And we're standing up and saying it. And it says, And Melech are kings to the brightness of thy rising. As we come to understand more, and our Father tells us to stand up and say it, yeah, yeah. then it says, Kings and Gentiles are coming to the light, yeah, and yeah. those that want the light. So this Hebrew History Month, we have been studying Yahweh's Shemite natural and spiritual royalty. She to tell like this, right? And that a man and woman couple of the spiritual royalty flourish in the dynamics of dominion when they keep his humanity division commandment. Go yeah, to yeah. Acts the 10th chapter. Yeah, yeah. So he has a humanity division commandment. And a man and woman of the Shemite spiritual royalty, they flourish in dominion. Yeah, yeah. When they obey this commandment. Right, right. Acts the 10th chapter. Now this does not mean that Yahweh is a respecter of persons. Nope. Some people feel pretty good as long as you're talking about they're on top. <laughs> or what they uh, believe or what the world says this person this this is supposed to be number one this is supposed to be number two but when you get into the scripture and then it disagrees with what uh, the dark earth says tell that is, then right. there are some that that have a problem with that oh yeah tell we say, don't Acts say, the 10th chapter tell, tell like your daddy told you to verses 34 to 35 Praise Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 35, and it reads, 
Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that Elohim is no respecter of persons. Verse 35. But in every nation, he that reverence him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. All right. So, that's Yahweh. Here the scripture says, he is no respecter of persons. It says, then Kepha opened his mouth in a mark of an image. I perceive, and those of us that are, are spiritual Shemites, we perceive that. And you really don't even have to be spiritual. All you have to be is just a fair-minded person and have your head on straight. I perceive that Elohim is no respecter of persons. Well, we're his people, so we have no respect of persons. Right, right. It says, but in every nation, every goee, he that respects Yahweh, he that reverences Yahweh, yep, yep. he that obeys Yahweh, he says, respects him, and he works tzedakah, or works righteousness. He does what's right according to what the Creator said in the Scriptures is right. Right, right. Is accepted of him. And accepted of us. So he's no respecter of person, but he is a respecter of his commandments. Go yep. to Romans the eleventh chapter. Praise the mighty God. Hallelujah. He's not a respecter of persons, no, no. but he is a respecter of his commandments. Romans the eleventh chapter. And verse. 13. So Hallelujah. you saw in Isaiah that it mentioned the gent it had mentioned the Gentiles. Uh -huh. So now here we're gonna look at some spiritual Shemite royalty, Shemite spiritual royalty that was sent to the Gentiles to let them know about Yahweh's yeah, yeah. just like we have been sent. Hallelujah. Now we're not sent to all people, but we have had Gentiles come into our congregation and we've loved on them. Just like our Father loved yes. her because we love all people. Hallelujah. So we're not a respecter of persons because our Father's not a respecter of persons. But we are a respecter of commandments. Yeah, yeah. Romans the 11th chapter. Let's read verse 13, please. And we're going to skip down. Romans chapter 11 and verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. All right, so so here is Shaul, and he's saying, and now he he was a uh, of the spiritual royalty. He was a, a Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. I'm a mar to you, go we, you Gentiles. And as much as I am a disciple or I'm a messenger of the the Gentiles, this is what Yahweh set him up to do. Uh -huh. And as I said, there are there are some camps or temples in certain neighborhoods where they don't get the, the Gentiles coming to attend their temples, but we are in a neighborhood to where we have had Gentiles and do have Gentiles come to uh, attend our temple. He says, inasmuch as this is what Yahweh has told me what to do, I'm apostle of the Gentiles, right. I magnify mine office. In other words, I understand he sent me to do this, right, right. and I understand he sent me to, to minister to them. Yeah. So all nationalities have access to our TV shows and our YouTube videos. Hallelujah. And I um, was looking through some, some old papers and I saw um, a beautiful letter from this beautiful Gentile brother that we had the opportunity to love on. Hallelujah. And he was from England. And uh, he, he wrote us a letter. Um, he's back in England now. And this was several years ago, but just a wonderful brother. We actually had videos because he was part of those that did the foot washing on the Passover. And just, just a beautiful, beautiful yes. brother. It says, Dear Brother Micaiah and Sister Shaloma, thank you for writing back to me. By the time you read this, I should be back in England. I will write to you both in England when I can. I feel very privileged to have worshipped with you. You have taught me how to worship the Lord in truth and spirit. Thank you for keeping me on your list of prayers. Your brother in the Lord, Stephen. Praise says, the mighty God. Hallelujah, brother Stephen. Praise the mighty so God. The, beautiful. Yeah. Right. Yahweh is no respecter of person, right, so right. neither are we. And we, we love brother Stephen very much. So all nationalities have access to our TV shows and YouTube. 
A man and woman who keep Yahweh's commandments become part of his Shemite spiritual royalty. Brother Stephen was part of his spiritual yeah, royalty. Yeah. And there was That's a beautiful it. brother, uh, Brother Michael, and he moved out of state uh, too in the United States, but Stephen, you know, went back home uh, overseas. And uh, he wrote us a beautiful letter. I haven't seen it just yet. But uh, anyway, I know it was no uh, accident that Yahweh had me run across Brother That's Stephen's right. letter. Let's get down to Romans, the 17th chapter. So, so when a man and woman keep Yahweh's commandments, they become part of his Shemite spiritual yeah, royalty. Yeah. So, so, we, so we want to be sure that we've been talking about Shemites becoming a couple, a man and woman. So Yahweh wants to be sure that other nationalities, other nationalities understand that when they come to accept Yahweh and Yahshua, then they become, as a man and a woman, they become a spiritual couple with dynamic dominion that, too. That is right for so the hands to know. But now, Yahweh also wants us to understand this law that he put out there yep. in humanity's divisions that is right. so that they're not robbed of their dynamics of right. dominion by breaking that law. All right, um, Romans chapter 11, let's skip down to verse 17 and then we're going to skip down again. Hallelujah. Romans 11 and verse 17, please. Romans chapter 11 and verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partaketh of the root and fatness of the olive tree. All right, so he's saying now that the, the, the Shemite royalty, that's the olive tree, that's the, 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 the branch. Yeshua is the branch, but he represents this, this Shemite spiritual royalty that is the tree, the, the, the olive tree. Yeah, yeah. It says that some of the branches were broken off. He's talking about Shemites that did not convert to become spiritual or became rebellious yeah, to the yeah, 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 commandments. Yeah. He said, if you Gentiles, being a wild olive tree, by the Father's mercy and grace, he grafted you in among right. the Shemite spiritual royalty, and you're partaking of the root, which is Yahshua the Son, and the fatness of the olive tree of the of the Shemite spiritual royalty. Yeah, yeah. So let's get down to verse 24. So we said you're blessed now. Yeah, yeah. Just like we understand. Yeah. We're blessed. All right, verse 24. Verse 24, for if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted, grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? All right, so, so here is this, this spiritual Shemite counseling the Gentiles and yeah, letting yeah. them know according to Yahweh exactly what he said and exactly yeah, yeah. what their position is. Just like all of us. Yeah. So whether we're natural Shemites or non-Shemites, the, the law is the same. That's it's right. one law. It is written. You break Yahweh's law it's just written. because you're a natural Shemite, that does not move you up any higher. No. Nope. If you're a non-Shemite, you break Yahweh's law, you're in the same position. But both of you come up higher when you obey his law. He said, if you were cut out of the olive tree, cut off from the Shemite spiritual royalty, you're wild by nature, yeah. but he, Yahweh did something special for you, contrary to your nature. He, he grafted you into right, the right. good olive tree, yeah, yeah. into the spiritual Shemite royalty, said, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, natural Shemites, be able to come back to their own olive tree? Mm -hmm. So when non-natural Shemites obey his humanity division commandment, they become a couple with his dynamic dominion in the earth. Yeah, yeah. Just like natural Shemites. Go to Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter. So it's not just natural Shemites uh, like it is, right? that can have this, this Shemite spiritual 
dynamic dominion in the earth. They're all going. In Deuteronomy 10th chapter. When non natural Semites obey his humanity, the vision commandments, and his other commandments, That's it. they become a couple with his dynamic yes, dominion in the earth. But the thing is, he says, the commandment says, after their kind. Yeah. Deuteronomy 10. We want to read verse 19. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 10. And verse 19, please. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 19. Love ye therefore the stranger. For ye were strangers in the land of Israel. All right, so here's Yahweh's commandment now about loving the stranger, uh -huh. about loving those who are not Shemites. It says, I'll have ye therefore the stranger, because you were strangers in the yeah, land yeah. of Mitzrayim. And actually, we're strangers and sojourners in the earth. We're yeah. just passing through. That's what I'm telling you, bro. Love the stranger. Yeah, yeah. We love Brother Stephen. Brother Stephen loved us. Yes. Why? We understood we're all in the same family. We're all spiritual Shemites. Praise the mighty God. So Yahweh expects the Shemite spiritual royalty, whether natural Shemites or not, to respect his humanity division after his kind commandment. Tell it like it is, Genesis, bro. Genesis, the 26th chapter. Tell it like it is, bro. So he expects the Shemite royalty. Again, whether they're natural Shemites or not. Why not fall? To obey his humanity division after his kind commandment. Going to Genesis 26th chapter. Hallelujah. So the scriptures recorded in Genesis 6th chapter, men and women disrespecting Yahweh, disrespecting that after his kind commandment, uh -huh. by choosing wives according to their beauty. Right. How they looked outwardly. And they just said, hey, huh. she, she looks good to me, All right. so I'll marry her. All right today. Uh, Genesis 26, and verses 34 to 35. Hallelujah. But that was disrespecting his commandments. Oh, yeah. Disrespecting him. Uh-huh. And we see it brought a worldwide flood. Genesis yeah. 26, verses 34 to 35. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 34. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beeri, the Hittite, and Bathsheba, man, Bathsheba, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. Verse 35. Which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. All right, so now Isaac and Rebekah were Shemite spiritual royalty. All right. And they had two sons, Esau and Jacob. So now here is Esau. It says he was 40 years old when he took to Isha a wife, Judith, Habatha, the daughter of Beiri the Hittite. <coughs> Excuse me. So he's taken someone from the tribes of Ham. Yeah, yeah. And Bashemath, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, which is was again from the Hittite, from from the tribe of Ham, as opposed to the tribe of Shem, which he was from. We saw in the the second show that Noah had three sons, and this is how the earth was divided after the flood. He had the nation of Japheth. He had the nations of Shem. He had the nation of Ham. It says. Verse 35, okay, so he took these two women and married them. Now 35, it says, it was a grief of mind unto his parents. Yeah, yeah. Isaac and Rebecca. Why? What was it, a personality d dislike? A, no. No. It was because they were of the Shemite spiritual royalty, and they knew he broke the commandment. That's it of marrying after his kind or of, of, of picking a, a virtuous woman, picking a woman that would obey Yahweh's law, statutes, and commandments. Tell it like it is, bro. Like he had commanded. So he was disrespecting Yahweh uh -huh. by choosing these wives, whatever criteria he used, but we see in another place, he knew it was going to displease his mother and father. Right, right. After this, although he did this before, 
But in another couple of chapters, you're going to see where he marries some more of Ham's tribes because it would displease his mother and right, father. Right. That's like it is, right? But really, he, he was overlooking who it was really displeasing, know, right? which was Yahweh. So the Shemite, go to uh, Genesis 34. So the uh, Shemite spiritual royalty queen taught King Lemuel in Proverbs 31st chapter uh -huh. Yahweh's commandment, and that's why Isaac and Rebekah were grieved right, right. when their son Esau was marrying these women because they had taught him that same commandment. Right. And the queen taught King Lemuel that he was going to forfeit the dynamics of dominion in these unsanctioned relationships. Right, right. Like it, in these Rob. relationships that Yahweh said, look, these are no good for you. This is not the way I want you to be. Right. So it was a grief of mind to them that Esau would deliberately disobey and not listen to what they had told him about what Yahweh said. Genesis, the 34th chapter. And we want to read verses 1 to 3. Please, Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 34. So this was Shemite royalty, spiritual royalty. Yeah, yeah. That was upset about the wives that their son, <coughs> Mary, <coughs> excuse me, took as wives. Genesis 34, verses 1 to 3, please. Genesis chapter 34, verse 1. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she, she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Verse 2. And when Shechem, the son of Hamer, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. Verse 3. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. All right, so now here we're, we're looking at some other tribes where here's this, this, this Shemite spiritual royalty. She, she was a daughter. She was a Shemite. Uh, yeah. And she went to visit some women of the, the Ham tribes, the Hamitic tribes. Uh -huh. Well, here's this, this, this man of the, the Hamite tribe. He looked at her. Evidently, she must have been beautiful. Yeah. As we said, uh, Yahweh made her some of the most naturally physically beautiful people yes. and handsome people Praise the mighty God. he said when he saw her now we don't know if he raped her but we see that he did have sexual relations with her he took her it says he lay with her and he defiled her so that was breaking Yahweh's commandment yeah, yeah. that was something he said don't do so even if he didn't rape her it was commanded for a man and woman not to come together to have sexual relations until after they are married. Just like it is, bro, so we can and know. They're the, in this dark earth <laughs> and gross darkness over the people, know, when you right? stand up and say things like that, then they look <laughs> at you like, you know, you've lost your mind I because know, right? the world has gone crazy yes, it is in, in sexual sin. Yeah. And the world has gone crazy minimizing a yeah. woman's body, minimizing her, her virtue, minimizing yeah. her virginity, right, right. and has it all out of whack. Yeah. But that's why we study the scriptures, so we can get back in whack yes. and tell them what Yahweh said. It, it yeah. says, then after he, he took her, he saw her, he liked what he saw, he took her, he, he slept with her, it says, and he defiled her. Uh -huh. you, you see those words? Defi he messed her up. Yeah. That wasn't anything good. It's not like when somebody sees you and then they like how you look <laughs> and then they, they sleep, have sexual relations right. with you. That's defiling you. That's it. It says, and then his soul clave unto Dinah and he loved her. He didn't love her. Uh -huh. As we saw in another show, when this Shemite Amnon saw his, his sister, and she was beautiful. And it said he loved her. That's not love. No, that's that's lust. hatred. That's hatred. lust. Yeah, hatred and love. It says he, he loved Dinah, and then he spake kindly unto her after he had defiled her. Hmm. And Dinah understood because she's of this Shemite royalty. Right. She understood, like, it's, it, it's such a sad thing 
uh, these days yeah. where there's so few young girls that have been taught right. to, to feel sad about losing their, uh, no, right. their, their virginity and, and understanding fully what it is because they haven't been taught. Right. It says so he, he loved her but he didn't. And now he's trying to, to talk to her and, and tell her, well, you know what, I want to marry you. The marriage comes first. It doesn't yeah. come after. All right. Genesis 34. Mm -hmm. Now let's skip down to verse uh, 25 to 31. Uh, yeah. So now we saw in one place where this Shemite spiritual royalty, Isaac and Rebekah, looked at their son Esau marrying uh -huh. some, some women that he wasn't supposed to marry. And it said they were grieved by it. Right, right. Grieved in righteousness because they knew he did wrong. Right. He sinned against Yahweh. So now we're looking at where the scripture says this man, this Hamite of the Hamite tribe, took this Shemite woman, Dinah, and slept with her before he married her or even thought about asking to marry her. Right, but right. really, if he had asked, they were... Shemai spiritual royalty, they were going to tell him no. Right. Yahweh forbid that. Right. So now we're going to see how they reacted. These men from the Shemai spiritual royalty, yeah, when yeah. they found out what this man had done to their yeah. sister. All right. They didn't say, okay, we're going to make you marry her. No. Right, no. You're going to see what, what they actually did, uh, how, yeah. how they thought about it. Genesis 34, let's read verses 25 to 31, please. Verse 25. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sore, and two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. Verse 26. And they slew Hamer and Shechem, his son, with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. All right, so you read in between verse 3 and verse 25, uh -huh. you'll see where uh, this man that, that raped whatever he did to, to this Shemite woman, Dinah, <clears throat> came to ask could he have her hand in right. marriage. And then her <laughs> brothers found out that he had slept with right, her right. before he came to, to ask. So then they told him, well, you know, we circumcised. Right, right. So all your men have to be circumcised before we can make any kind of covenant with you. But really, they didn't intend to make a covenant no, with him. No. Because he had done he his sister right, according to Yahweh's righteous right, law. Right. So here we're looking at where all, all of these men had been circumcised. And so then it says, uh, the third day it says, when the men were sore from the circumcision, said two of the sons of Yaakov, these are Dinah's brothers, uh, Shimon and Lewi, says Dinah's brothers, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and killed all the males. And they killed Hamor and Shechem, this is the one that, that raped the sister or did whatever and then wanted to marry her, with the edge of the sword and then took, took Dinah out of his house and went out. So he's just going to keep her in his house. <laughs> So they came and killed them all and took their sister. All right, verse 27. Verse 27, the sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. So you see the, the length that they're going to? Uh -huh. This is the spiritual Shemite royalty that's doing this. And they're getting, they got their laws from Yahweh. It says, the son of Yaakov came upon the men that were killed and then they took the spoil from the city why? Because they had defiled right. their sister. Which is Yah. Yes. That was wrong to, to treat that woman like that. It's wrong to treat any woman like that. Yeah, yeah. We're looking at this, this Shemite spiritual royalty. Uh -huh. We're looking at Yahweh's righteous laws and standards. Yes. Because this gross darkness has covered know, the right? people. Wow. They have all different kind of standards now. Yep. They, they could care less about uh, respecting uh, anything, whether it's a man or a woman. Right. All right, verse 28. Verse 28. They took their sheep, their oxen, their donkeys, and that which was in the city, 
and that which was in the field. Verse 29, and all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives took they captive and spoiled even all that was in the house. All right, so no. they, they went to war uh, no, because right. that was an act of war that this man had done to their sister. It was just that repugnant. It was just that such a violation. Yeah. So you can see how far the world has gotten away right. from it in their thinking. Right. It said the son, the, uh, they took their sheep, oxen, donkeys, and that which was in the city, in the field, their wealth, all their children, and their wives they took captive, uh -huh. and everything that was in their house. All right, verse 30. Verse 30, and Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, Ye have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Parasites. And I, being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. Verse 31, and they said, Should should he deal with our sister as with the prophet? All right, so so here is uh -huh. the, the, these these uh <coughs> the Shemite royalty. Uh -huh. put, it, put it in perspective. Yeah. And here's Jacob. He's one of the patriarchs of the the Shemite spiritual royalty. He's talking to his sons. He say, Hey, you troubled me to make me stink. He didn't know they were gonna all right. do all that. And I don't know if I, I didn't really um. Re research the account to read every last paragraph. I don't know if Yaakov knew about it, what the man had done before they went and just had him do all that or whatever, but either way, he's saying, you made me stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and Perizzites. He said, hey, we're few in number. They may gather themselves against me and slay me, and I will be destroyed in my house. But the, the Shemite men said, should we let him deal with our sister like she's a whore? Yeah. So for you, you sweet sisters out here to think that a man wanted to sleep with you and then not want to marry you, uh -huh. and even even yet sleep with you and then have a baby by you and refuse to marry you, like these men said, hey, should we should we let people deal with you like you a whore? No. Uh -huh. Genesis thirty-eight. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. so, so these so these brothers did did this. In righteousness. And they told their father. Yeah, yeah. These are the Shemite royalty too. They said, mm mm, no. Genesis 38. So unsanctioned relationships include uh, the couple that we just saw, where Esau married these people from uh, the Hamites instead uh -huh. of Shemites. Then it, here's this, this other Hamite, and he's lay with this 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 Shemite lady and the brother said hey he treated her like a whore right so then we went in and, and took care of her. so now that was an unsanctioned relationship but it also includes fornication which is having sex with being married is, right. masturbation huh. and relating in perverted ways like going down on men and women. Huh. And of course, sodomy. Genesis 38, let's read verses 8 to 10. Praise the mighty God. Genesis chapter 38 and verse 8. And Yehuda said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. Verse 9. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. Verse 10, And the thing which he did displeased Yahweh, that wherefore he slew him down. Now, here's uh -huh. Yahweh, uh -huh. and he killed the Shemite. This is a Shemite. It said, And Yehuda, who was of the, the Shemite spiritual royalty, he said unto all men, to the son, go into your brother's Ishtar and marry her and raise up seed to your ah, your brother. And Onan, Yada knew that the seed should not be his, came to pass when he went in unto his brother's Ishtar wife, that he, he pulled out and spilled yeah. his seed on the ground, that he shouldn't give seed to his brother. 
It says, and the thing that he did displeased the devil. Huh. There are people are not in, involved with this. It said, thing he did, did displeased Yahweh. Hallelujah. Wherefore Yahweh killed him. Huh. So uh, I, I found out that there are people calling themselves, supposed to be holding themselves for, until they get married. But they're playing with themselves. Huh. That's the same thing as this man spilling his seed on the ground. So that's in the same category where, where the Genesis 6, whether you're looking at somebody and you're picking them because they look outwardly beautiful, or you're playing with yourself. That's huh. fornication. Whether you have a partner or not, that's huh. fornication. You're not waiting till marriage. Huh. Go to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Tell that you there, y'all, so we can know. And then, when, when you get the man and woman of Yahweh, you find out this going down on people is perverted also. Praise the mighty Yah. And there's a, um, a person that I've heard talking about it, and every time they say, sing on the microphone, eat peach cobbler, it turns my stomach. It makes me <laughs> never want to eat peach cobbler again. It's filth. <laughs> It's nothing from Yahweh. It's perversion. Hebrews, the 13th chapter. So the semi-spiritual spiritual royalty are not of those who ignorantly say whatever people do is between themselves. I know, right? Nor do they say marriage is just a piece of paper. Huh. Hebrews 13. I'm going to read verses. Uh, one verse, verse 4, Hebrews Hallelujah. chapter 13, Hallelujah. and verse Hallelujah. 4, please. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefined, but whoremongers and adulterers Elohim will judge. Alright, so you're saying all these people is whoring around and, and doing whatever, having all these sexual partners without being married and pretending like they're married. Living know, together right? as husband and wife and their boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, as as Ra says, Yah flesh, uh -huh. Yahweh has no boyfriend and girlfriend in the scripture. <laughs> he has gay. no man friend and woman friend in the scripture. He has no friends with benefits in the and scripture. Gay. It's all sin, right? And have sex. He so said marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. And what he means by the bed being undefiled is when the man and the woman come together in marriage, when they get up from those bed sheets, the blood of the covenant is supposed to be on those bed sheets yeah, yeah. from the woman. Yeah, yeah. Tell like it is, Ron, so we can know. Tell it just like your daddy told you. So you can't undo what you've done, but you can repent. Yep. Yeah. That's it. And do better from Hallelujah. now on. Hallelujah. And you can tell others to do the same That's thing. That's it. Let people look at you strange. <laughs> Your Father in Heaven is looking at you and saying, Yes, my son. Yes, my daughter. Yeah. Tell them. Tell them. As I, I'm listening to this, this brother go to Genesis, the 27th chapter. <clears throat> and he says, You may not want to listen. But I know you heard me. <laughs> right. So I, I, I like that. Yeah. That's a, a beautiful saying. Genesis 27. So a man or woman saying and thinking other than the way Yahweh said are not interested in worshiping him. Uh, that's right. They're not. That's right. I know, right? Genesis 27 and verse 46, please. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 27 and verse 46. And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these, which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do? Ah. All right, so now here is this, this Shemai spiritual royalty yeah. woman. She, she's saying, just like the, the queen in the Shemai queen, excuse me, in Proverbs 31st chapter, taught King Lemuel. Yeah, yeah. 
She said it's back here in Genesis. I know, right? And she already saw her, her oldest son, Esau, marrying and, and breaking Yahweh's after right, his right. kind uh, uh, commandment, division commandment, not marrying a Shemite. So she's telling her husband, this is this dynamic dominion couple talking to each other. Yeah, yeah. And keeping each other on that straight and narrow path, obeying Yahweh. Hallelujah. So now she's saying to, to her husband Isaac, she said, I, I'm tired of, of looking at these, these women throwing themselves, <laughs> uh, in, you know, in, in front of my sons. Right. Now one of them has already broken the commandment. He said, because of the daughters of Heth, so this is from another division. It says, if Yaakov take a, a Ishael, the daughters of Heth, such as these, which are the daughters of the land, mm -hmm. said, what good shall my life do to me? Mm -hmm. She understood about passing on the baton of salvation. Right. You don't pass it on through disobedience. You don't pass it on by, by disobeying Yahweh. You don't pass it on by just deciding you want to do what you want to do. Right, right. So let's say when she says, I'm weary of the, of the daughters of Heth. What is this English word, Heth? What is she talking about these daughters? Because you're going to find out it's referring to the same type of woman or man as in Genesis, the sixth chapter, where it says the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of right, me. Right, right. So now she's saying, I'm weary of the daughters of Heth. And what good shall my life do me after I've taught, we've taught our, our sons right. what Yahweh said to do if they pick one of these women to marry? All right, so who are these daughters of Heth? The English word Heth is the Hebrew word Keith, found in Strong's Blue Letter, Blue Letter, Blue Letter Bible, number 2845, Brown Driver Briggs, Hebrew English. English lexicon defines Heth as apparently represented as ancestors of the Hittites with etymology and meaning unknown. It is pronounced as from in Hebrew and Assyrian but not, not Egyptian. It means begotten by Canaan, lived at Mamre, Hebron, and one of them sold Abraham, the cave of Machpelah, for a sceptre. All right, so it's just talking about it, it was Hamites, right, right. not Shemites. Right. And so here's this this woman talking to her husband, this this Shemite spiritual royalty, saying, "Look, we got to get him out of here and send him to some of our people, right. so he can marry this virtuous woman and find her, like Yahweh told him to." Go to Exodus, the twelfth chapter. So Genesis chapter 6 mentions a mixed multitude for the first time yeah, yeah. as the sons of Elohim and the daughters of men. Uh -huh. That was the first time mixed multitude was mentioned. He didn't use those words, but that's exactly right. what it was. Yeah. Exodus the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verses 37 to 38. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 12. And verses 37 to 38. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. Verse 38. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. All right, so here is the exit of the children of Israel after they came out of Egyptian slavery for 430 years. It said, How bad of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. It says, And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds and even much cattle. So it's, the scriptures record Shemites leaving Egyptian slavery with a mixed multitude. So let's see, what, what is this mixed multitude? What, do, what exactly does that mean? The, the three English words of and a mixed are one Hebrew word, Arab, or Erev, found as Strong's Blue Letter Bible, 6154. 
Brown Driver Briggs Hebrew English Lexicon defines them as mixture of mongrel race, Arabia, mingled people, mixed company, diverse in character or content body attached to the pe to a people, to Israel, to Egyptians, to Chaldeans, to strike out as a pair, but with two different en entries into the language and means interwoven with work. Justinius Hebrew English lexicon defines and a mix as a crosswise yarn of people woven together an imitation, strangers, and aliens. All right, so he said his mixed multitude means they had crossed over from their humanity division. <coughs> it doesn't say what divisions that they were. Could have been some Shemites mingled with some other people or whatever. All right. All right. But I thought it was interesting that it says Arabia. And really, the Hebrew word Arab <laughs> is E-R-E-B, but the, the complexion of the, the countries over there have been changed. Yeah, yeah. And they are called what? Arabs. Uh -huh. But it says it's a crosswise yarn of people woven together, imitation people, strangers, and aliens. Go to yeah, they not a mixed multitude means that they have crossed over yeah. humanity divisions. And That's right. They, they picked and chose wives all which they wanted. Yep. With no consideration for what Yahweh said, whether they did it out of ignorance or whatever. Try right. to put it in perspective. Yeah. And here's Yaakov. In verse 1. And when the people saw that Moshe delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aharon and said unto him, Up, make us Elohims, which shall go before us. As for this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of Mizraim, we walk not what has become of him. All right, see, so, so we, we uh, went later, we went earlier into uh, Exodus 12, so we right, can right. see now in verse uh, chapter 32, we understand there was a mixed multitude right, in right. with them. All, All right, right, so now here they are in uh, 32, and one time, uh, okay, when they saw that Moshe delayed, he went up to, to the mount to talk to Yahweh and to get the, the Ten Commandments. He said, Ha'am gathered themselves together against Aharon, against this, this Shemite spiritual leader, Aharon, and they are to him, uh, uh, make us uh, elves, which shall go before us. Because as for this, this Moshe, uh, Ha'adon that brought us out of the land of Mizraim, we don't know what happened to him. So. Hey, let's let's make us some some Elohim. Right, Don't right. make yourself something. <laughs> but men do that and I make know, themselves right. something uh, to worship. We're gonna skip down uh, to verses 21 to 23. Yeah, so Yahweh that. warns the Shemite spiritual royalty about the mixed multitude, uh -huh. bringing pressure on them yeah. for obeying His commandments, and that's what they do. Yeah. They bring yeah. pressure. Because one of the main things they figure is, well, we got the majority going for us, so, uh -huh. so <clears throat> if we just get enough people, and that's that's what uh, dead people think, spiritually right, right. dead, if we just get enough people, or if we just <clears throat> talk loud enough, or if we just push hard right, enough, right. then that's going to do is, something. Bro. It's not going to do anything. Nope. Not, not, in not, not in, in, in the place where it matters, in the spirit realm, right. where we're dealing with Yahweh and dealing with righteousness. So Yahweh warns the Shemite spiritual royalty that the mixed multitude will bring pressure on them for obeying Yahweh's commandments. Exodus 32, and we see they brought pressure on yeah, yeah. Aharon, yeah. saying, look, we don't know what happened to this man. He went up to the mountain, so look, let's, let's make us some, some gods. 32, 21 to 23, please. Verse 21, And Moshe said unto Aharon, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? All right, so now here's it, this spiritual royalty. Now he's coming down after uh, uh, talking to, to Yahweh one-on-one. -on -one, yeah, yeah. And Moshe is asking from one spiritual, Shemite spiritual royalty to another. He said, 
what did these people do to you that you have brought so great a sin on them? Uh -huh. And he asked all of us that are Shemite spiritual royalty, what, how much pressure can somebody bring against you that you will not stand up and say what I'm telling you to say? Right. Bring sin. And upon. live how I'm telling you to live. Try like this, Ron. Bringing sin on me. You, you're not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but you, what, what the expression? You got to call a spade a spade. <laughs> When somebody treating you like a whore, yeah, you got to let people know they're treating you like a whore. Yeah. Moshe, ask Aaron, what do these people do to you that you have let them hurt themselves so right. much? Right. Right. You let them bring so great a sin on them. Yeah. It's like okay, people don't now know when they're not coming to the temple yep. or when they're Tell not studying yes, the right. word. How are you just going to stand up and let them bring this big sin on themselves? Uh, How can you just stand by and let them do this to themselves? What the, what the Hebrew record? Where'd the love go? I know, right? You're thinking about yourself. You're not thinking about them. And there's a way we can tell people anything. Yep. We don't have to be rude. Nope. Just go and ask the Father for the words. Yes. But he did, he asked Aaron, how could you let them bring that great sin? I know, right? Verse 22. Verse 22, and Aharon said, let not the anger of my master wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on huh. mischief. Verse 23, for they said unto me, make us Elohims which shall go before us. As for this, as for as for this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of Mizraim, we walk not what has become of him. So he didn't even have any excuse. <laughs> he went to blame it on the people. But Moshe asked him straight up, look, right. you know better. Right. It's your fault. Right. They did it, but it's your fault. And he's asking, why did you stand up and let them right. why didn't you, you do what you know is right? Right. Go to Genesis, the ninth chapter. So the Shemite man Aaron caved against the pressure from non-spiritual Shemites uh -huh. and the mixed multitude. Right, right. Go to Genesis 9. But you and I need to trust the scriptures. Yes. Yahweh's word is the only thing holding him back from sending worldwide floods over and over again because people are doing the same thing. His Earth. word is the only thing that's holding right, them right. back from having a bunch of worldwide floods. And, and this is me. I believe this is why he, he gave his word. Uh, he yeah. knew. Yeah, he knew. See? He, he knows everything. Killed everybody. But but eight people. Yeah. But it's only his word. Because it. it's not that people have changed. They're doing the same thing. Yeah, words. Only his word is holding them back. So trust the scriptures that we're going to read. That's the only thing that's holding them back. That's so it. It's in the worldwide flood again. <clears throat> Genesis 9, let's read 12 to 15, please. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 9. Hallelujah. And Elohim said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Yes. Verse 13, I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Verse 14, and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. Verse 15, and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. So Yahweh said, I, Amen. I made this covenant with you. Yep. If he hadn't made it, because huh. man is, is, is doing the same thing, breaking his humanity division commandment. He said, I'm going to set my bow in the cloud. He said, I'm going to make this as a token of the covenant. So when you look look up in the cloud and see that beautiful multicolored rainbow, yep. 
That's, that's his, his, so his like word that he gave you. So know. Hey, I will not bring a flood to destroy all flesh anymore. Right. Go to Proverbs 31st chapter. That's the only thing that's holding it back. It's not like man is doing any better. I know, right? That is the only thing. It's just his mercy. Proverbs 31st chapter. And he, he gave his word. He would not yep, do yep. it. So the queen prophesied over her son, King Lemuel, in Proverbs 31st chapter, that <laughs> Yahweh commanded him not to father a mixed multitude. That's what she, she told him. Yahweh right, commanded right. him, don't father a mixed multitude. Proverbs 31, and let's read verses 1 to 3, please. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Verse 2. What, my son, and what, the son of my womb, and what, the son of my vows? Verse 3. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. All right, so here she is instructing this king as Shemite spiritual royalty. Yeah, yeah on how to have the throne be established, yep. on how to live in righteousness, on how to live a life in the service of Yahweh, standing up, teaching the, the law, statutes, and commandments, or the oracles of Yahweh, yep. and represent Yahweh in the earth to bring salvation, not only to the Shemites, but to everybody. That's it. By like living that. right in front of them. Right. You can't end up right if you don't start out right. <laughs> no, and right. there's the, the, the man and woman couple in right status is where you start out right and then Yahweh caused you to progress further yeah, yeah. Right? Exodus the second chapter into oh, his yeah. will now because Yahweh's mercy allowed other nationalities to become part of his Shemite spiritual royalty uh -huh. that did not change his after his kind commandment no Exodus the second chapter no so just like natural Shemites they are eligible as partners in natural relationships with a man or woman after their kind. Tell like the daddy told you, This is the second chapter. Because there are some that, that jump the Grand Canyon, uh -huh. I'm going to say, because other nationalities now have become right, part right. of the, the spiritual Shemites. Tell like it is, Then, then that, that alters that commandment or huh. that makes them eligible. No. Uh -huh. 